You know, every once in a while, you come across things on the railroad that are out of place both in your region and out of place in time. That's exactly what I found at CSX's Howell Yard in Atlanta, Georgia on November 8, 2020. Typically, all you see here are blue and yellow CSX road switchers and big six-axle GEs, but today was different. The red and silver paint on these engines is distinctive, and I think most people, even non-rail fans, would recognize it. These locomotives once pulled freight for the famous Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway. They wear the famous Warbonnet paint scheme and were built in 1995, a little more than a year before the Santa Fe merged with Burlington Northern to form BNSF. On these other units, you can see how that railroad tried to evolve the paint scheme, but frankly, it just wasn't the same. Let's face it, these colors look the best on the streamliners they were originally intended for. The first locomotive to wear them was the Electromotive Corporation E1. The paint scheme itself was designed by Leyland Knickerbocker, who worked in the General Motors art and color section. It looks very much like a Native American headdress, with a red bonnet wrapping around the front of the engine. Units wearing this livery were used to pull Santa Fe passenger trains for decades. Sadly, the paint scheme disappeared when Amtrak took over those routes. But it eventually made a comeback. In 1989, Santa Fe resurrected it as part of its Superfleet campaign. Locomotives like these Electromotive Division SD75Ms worked well with the design because of their wide-nosed North American safety cabs. This is probably the most iconic paint scheme in railroad history. How many kids have toys painted like this? And how many of us model train enthusiasts just had to have at least one war bonnet of some kind on our layout? I don't know why these things were here in Atlanta or where they were going. Locomotives often have second or even third lives. These machines started with Santa Fe, then worked for BNSF, and are now owned by Progress Rail. Let's hope their next assignment doesn't involve a trip to the scrapyard.